ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight with two nations in Latin America, which are each the source of enormous frustration for the United States. In Panama today, the military dictator Manuel Noriega has once again thumbed his nose at the Bush administration. In Colombia for another day, no indication that the drug cartel can be reined in even with American support. The most overt violence there in the last 24 hours, a large explosion outside a government paint factory in the city of Medellin. First, here's ABC's Peter Collins. The bomb outside the paint factory wounded three people, destroyed the building, and damaged five others along with 30 cars. The bomb was the 14th to explode in the city since the weekend. Violence continued during the night despite a 10 p.m. to dawn curfew imposed by the city's mayor and backed up by about 4,000 army troops and police. More than 500 people were arrested for violating the curfew. Despite the tight security, terrorists in a moving vehicle threw five grenades at this exclusive club on the edge of the city. It has refused to admit any leaders of the drug cartel as members. There was no damage. During the night, terrorists also fired two American-made shoulder-launch rockets at tanks of the state-owned oil refinery, but they missed. Meanwhile, at Bogota's airport, Americans continue to leave the country. The State Department has ordered its embassy here to remove its dependents and urged all other Americans to leave as well. There is no suggestion so far that Colombia's government is backing off its campaign against the traffickers, nor is there any sign that it is willing to listen to their appeals to open talks. But a poll in Bogota's respected newspaper, El Tiempo, released today, indicates Colombians are pessimistic about the future. 60% believe the government cannot or will not win the war against the lords of cocaine. The pessimism may be reasonable. Throughout Colombia yesterday, 39 people were assassinated. Peter Collins, ABC News, Bogota, Colombia. Well, there's no way for President Bush to avoid the drug crisis, even though a day in the main sun with the Canadian Prime Minister was meant to be strictly casual. ABC's Ann Compton is at Kennebunkport. President Bush and visiting Canadian Prime Minister Mulroney together pledged to give any support Colombia requests. But the president firmly rejected the suggestion from some countries for a multinational strike force to put down the violence in Colombia. There is no point on Canada or the United States or group of countries imposing its will on a country that is now trying very, very hard to rid itself of this menace. The Bush administration said today the first military equipment requested by Colombia will be shipped this weekend. Additional aid will be offered in the president's sweeping anti-drug plan to be announced next week. The president denied reports that plan will shift away from an emphasis on interdiction of drugs at the U.S. borders. When I come out with this program, I'm going to urge that the emphasis be placed on all, all points. Yet a draft copy shows the military interdiction budget dropping from $308 million this year to $156 million in 1990. Some Democrats are already complaining about the funding levels. Joseph Biden, who will deliver the Democratic response to President Bush next week, fears the Bush plan will not put enough money into such priorities as drug treatment. I think it's not so much what's in his program, it's what's not in his program. Some Democrats are questioning President Bush's commitment to really spend the $7.8 billion his drug plan will cost. That's because he has yet to spend all of the nearly $3 billion in last year's big drug bill. Ann Compton, ABC News, Kenny Bunkport. And now Panama. The administration has accused the Panamanian dictator, General Manuel Noriega, of being involved in the drug trade. He's under indictment in Florida. He is still in power in Panama. Today, Noriega put a new government in place. ABC's John Quinones is in Panama City. General Noriega was all smiles as he emerged from Panama's presidential palace this afternoon. This is a historic moment for Panama, he said. He then introduced his hand-picked choice to be the new president, Francisco Rodriguez, a close associate of Noriega, who for the past three years has served as Panama's budget director. Today we end one chapter in Panama's history, said the new president. Tomorrow we begin another. But across town, the three men who won a landslide victory in last May's presidential elections, only to have them annulled by Noriega, call today's appointment a circus and a sham. These men are all worms from the same barrel, said one would-be vice president, and that barrel is dictatorship. The Panamanian people have blood in their souls, and we're fed up with the dictatorship. We're not going to give up. And we don't give a continental damn what Noriega has in mind. 
What the general has in mind for tomorrow is the inauguration of his new president and a full cabinet. Noriega will remain the real power here as head of the armed forces. Even the opposition admits the military strongman is laughing in the face of world isolation. John Quinones, ABC News, Panama City. President Bush promised again to continue the campaign to force Noriega out. But Mr. Bush admitted today, in his words, there is a high frustration level. On the diplomatic front, the administration took its case once again to the Organization of American States. Here's ABC's John McCarthy. Frustrated by the inability of the OAS to force from power General Noriega and his hand-picked surrogates, the U.S. again laid out its case against Panama's de facto ruler. Assertions by Noriega and his cronies that the U.S. charges are not substantiated by any evidence are, if you will excuse the term, bunk. For the first time, the U.S. made public bank records showing Noriega's rushed attempts to close secret accounts all over the world containing tens of millions of dollars once he had been indicted by U.S. grand juries last year. Noriega's greed, personal ambition, and selfishness are the origin, the core, and the sustenance of Panama's crisis. Noriega's lawyer was buying none of it. They slung a lot of mud. They called the general a lot of names. But where is the actual evidence? Across town in Washington and throughout the U.S., there was visible evidence that Noriega is winning in the short run. Panamanian consulates and the embassy were closing as the government in exile that only the U.S. recognizes is finally out of business. The problem of Panama is not going to go away. This chapter of the embassy is closed today, but we have not heard the last. All the tough talk about Noriega from the U.S. and from Noriega's political opponents cannot disguise the fact that the man still runs Panama and shows no sign of giving in to all the pressure. John McQuethy, ABC News, Washington. In a moment, the other news. Television evangelist Jim Baker has been sent to a mental hospital for tests. And later in the broadcast, a controversial plan to put bomb detectors at many American airports. And then on the American agenda tonight, job safety, or the lack of it, in the construction industry. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings.